Welcome to The Wine Reviewer. My name is Will, where I do tech unboxing, tech reviews, and tech tutorials. And the video you're about to see, I do not recommend you try this at home. This is gonna go really good or really bad. So, let's find out. This is the Fuji 16mm 1.4 lens. This is my most used prime lens for both photography and videography. A couple of months ago, I was filming with it on a tripod and I didn't secure it in place. As I was tilting the tripod down, the camera slipped off and hit the pavement lens first. It dented the filter so that the ring was dented and I can no longer unscrew it off the lens. Right, so now I have a lens with a broken filter on it and it's a problem for me because as the weather's getting warmer now, I want to be able to go outside and shoot in sunlight. And for me to do that, I need to have a step up ring to be able to attach my ND variable filter on and to kind of, so I can stop down the light outside. And I can't do that with a broken lens filter on there. So I have to remove it. The Fuji 16 millimeter 1.4 lens is a pretty expensive lens. It retails for $1,350 Canadian. And I didn't want a camera repair shop to damage my lens to the point where I can't use it anymore because they're trying to remove the filter on it. And I didn't know how they were gonna do it or what strategy they were gonna use. And I also didn't wanna pay $80 just for an estimate, just for someone to tell me they can't do it in the first place. So I decided to do it on my own. And realistically, if anyone's gonna break this lens, it might as well be this guy. And if there's anyone to blame, if it does get broken, it might as well be this guy. So the video you're about to see, I'm gonna take a Dremel to cut into the lens filter um, to kind of break it apart so I can remove it from the actual lens. The video you're about to see, I would definitely not recommend to anybody trying what I did. So, did I make a $1,350 mistake or did it actually work? I guess you'll find out. All right, as you're watching the video and you think I'm crazy, please give the video a thumbs up, like the video and consider subscribing to my channel for similar content. Here's a closer look at the filter um, where it's dented in. As you can see, there's just no way for me to, to screw it off. This is just jammed right in there. Okay, so the tools I'm gonna use is needle nose pliers to pull off the filter when it's cracked open. The next one is electrical tape, which I'll explain in a second here why I use it. And then a lens cloth brought to you by Costco and the Dremel with the metal blade on there to cut the filter. Okay, so this is my first attempt at trying to cut the lens here. So I have the lens cloth covering the lens to prevent it from being scratched, uh, as well as any metal shards hitting against it. And uh, as you can see, as I'm cutting into it, you can see the metal shards kind of flying off, off of it. I'm trying to be gentle here as I'm trying to do it slowly, not to cut too deep into it. However, it's an epic fail because I actually did end up cutting too deep and actually cut into the lens itself. Uh, you can see the nice groove there, but uh, it just still wasn't enough using pliers to, to get it open. So I realized that when I looked on the inside here, I have to cut a little bit more deep into, uh, into the filter. And I was really concerned that I might actually start uh, accidentally cutting into uh, the, the lens itself uh, just because of the depth. Um, so instead of being lazy, what I decided to do was actually cut out um, the lens cloth and put electrical tape around it to kind of secure it into place. So the main reason for electrical tape, and, and I don't think this actually really worked in theory, was um, if for some reason I slip with the Dremel, I'm hoping that the electrical tape will protect the lens a little bit um, so when the blade is cutting, that it will cut into the electrical tape a little bit more and um, it'll give me a visual cue not to cut any deeper. Um, so you can see there, I kind of reinforced that, that area with some electrical tape again. Um, here I am trying to cut deeper without actually cutting into the lens itself because due to the width of the blade. Um, so I'm kind of slowly chipping away at it. Uh, so I thought I'd a smart idea was to cut it horizontally against the filter to kind of pop it out. And I have to say this was a really bad mistake. I should not have done that. And I'll explain why um, in, the, in the conclusion. I actually mucked it up a little bit more. 
um, I found that wasn't working and then I went back to uh, cutting into it from the top. Um, so I kind of cut out a big chunk from it and I thought it'd be enough for me to use a needle nose plier to pull it out. And as you can see, it was, again, did not work. So what I decided to do was actually cut a second cut into the lens um, so that there was a chunk that I can actually peel off. So my rationale here is that I can peel off the chunk um, that it'll leave a big enough gap where it can actually pull off the broken lens filter. Um, sorry, it'll, it'll come into focus right there. You can see I did ha have a second cut and I peeled that chunk off and now there's a gap and I'm able to lift out the filter. Uh, but as you can see there, there's a second O-ring that's there that's actually part of the lens itself, that stock. And uh, I cut it too deep and as I'm lifting up, you can see the tape is actually peeling off um, the paper that's in there that talks about the you know the lens and the, and and the lettering that's on there. And so again, I cut it a little bit too deep. So here I am, just uh, brushing it and, and cleaning off the metal shards on there. And in hindsight, I should have not used a brush uh, because I think the brush might actually call, cause uh, micro scratches from the metal shards. And what I really should have done is used. Uh, the blower and kind of blow the shards out of there. Um, so uh, lesson learned, but I'm looking at the lens and so far I don't see any micro scratches uh, from the metal shards, but uh, I probably won't know until I shoot uh, in the dark. Uh, again, don't do what I did there. Uh, so here's the filter. Um, you can see that uh, it's completely cut now. And uh, you can see the chunk that I actually cut it out with. And that's how I managed to pull it off. And then here is the step up ring that I need it to go on. So initially when I put it on there, it didn't quite fit right. Um, you can see here that uh, it just pops right off. And then so I screwed it in again. Uh, this time I jammed it a little bit harder to see if I can get into the groove. And uh, I thought I had it. And then you can see it just pops right off. There are times of charm though, however, as I was able to get it right into the correct groove. I kind of had to work it a bit uh, back and forth, but then finally it did manage to turn into place. And as you can see here, it's very tight. So I'm pretty confident that I could put an ND uh, variable filter back on there and not have it fall off. So that's a good thing. Um, because of my unwise decisions, um, especially doing the horizontal cut, there's lots of cosmetic damage. And uh, so what I decided to do was take a black permanent marker just to cover up some of the silver, kind of dulled silver so it doesn't stand out and be reflective um, to kind of make it a little bit more normal. Um, again, this is just a cosmetic. I don't think it's gonna make it look nice at all, but at least it covers up the shine of the silver. All right, as you can see, it did work. My crazy method of using a Dremel to cut um, the lens filter from the lens to remove it worked. However, again, I do not recommend this method. As you can see from the video, I did cause cosmetic damage to the lens itself. Um, so I cut too deep and when I cut horizontally, I shaved off the top part of it as well. So uh, again, not recommended at all. But overall, I am happy that I'm able to put my step up ring back on and put my ND variable back on there so I can shoot outside. I am shooting on the 16 millimeter 1.4 lens right now for this video. And thankfully when I dropped it on the ground, uh, it didn't damage the internal mechanisms and it still focuses pretty well. Uh, so I think I left out there. All right, if you have any questions or comments or better tips of how to remove a lens, leave it down below. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time.